Hey guys, I am super excited today because we're getting our hands on, well, what's affectionately called the Baby Bronco, or officially called the Bronco Sport. That's right, behind me is the Bronco Sport, but it's not just any Bronco Sport, it's the Bronco Sport Badlands. It's named after the park in South Dakota, and it is by far the most off-road worthy Bronco you can buy right now, until, of course, the regular Bronco comes out later this year. Now, in this video, Tommy's behind the camera. We're going to give you a walk around. We're going to get our hands on it. We're going to show you what's under the hood. We're going to take a look inside. And first of all, I want to thank our friends here at Loveland Ford who lent us this car to take for a ride and to show it to you. So if you're interested in one, Loveland Ford. All right, Tommy, why don't you give them a walk around and kind of show them the outside and show them the tires and then we'll go under the hood. Absolutely. So the new Bronco Sport is based on the Ford C2 platform, a similar platform that underlies the Ford Escape. But the Bronco Sport, of course, is aimed more for that adventure lifestyle customer. And you can definitely tell that by the squared off styling compared to the standard Ford Escape. Now, first thing you notice on the Bronco Sport Badlands has to be the tow hooks. I am so happy they incorporated tow hooks onto the off-road trim. If you take a look underneath too, you'll find proper bash plates on both the powertrain and the fuel tank. That is always good to see. Now the tires, you have a couple of different tire options. This one is rolling on the Falcon Wild Peak AT tires. These are a 235 width. They're pretty beefy for this class. Uh, chief competitor in this class for the Bronco Sport Badlands is something like the Jeep Compass Trailhawk or the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. So it's got some pretty steep competition. All right, Tommy, I'm gonna open the hood. Let's take a peek underneath. So the base engine is a three cylinder. This is the four cylinder, two liter EcoBoost, horsepower rating 250 and 277 foot pounds of torque. Let me get the sticker. Let's yeah. talk about the most important thing, the price. Now, before we talk about the price, I want to point something out here in the back of the Bronco Sport. I do like the integrated roof rails, that's cool. It does have this step up roof line, which is very similar to what you'd find on Land Rover SUVs. It also has this kind of raked forward C pillar, and this whole area looks a lot like the Land Rover Freelander, in my opinion. Um, but it's, it's a cool look, I'm glad they did it because it increases the headroom a little bit in the rear, and it's an overall cool thing. What's the price in this bad boy? Well, let's look at that number and it's right there 35,840 you're looking at 23 mpg combined 21 city 26 highway and the stuff that of course i'm really interested is a lot of the stuff that's over here so there's a front 180 degree camera you've got uh paddle shifters time to get that uh terrain management uh trail control uh and just a lot of really off-road goodies yeah the one thing that from an off-road perspective it doesn't have is a low range and usually if you want a hard core off-road car you do want that low range the Bronco will have it this one doesn't but it does have goat mode you want to show them that all right here we go so the first mode normal of course it's normal second mode eco now we get an interesting one sport mode slippery mode and then if I go the other way I get the off-road modes mud and ruts sand and of course rock crawl and you know you may be thinking to yourself does that actually do anything? And in a video when we actually take this off-road, we're going to find out. Uh, but Ford says that they've taken kind of the trick rear differential out of the Focus RS and actually incorporated it into a much more off-road worthy way inside uh, this Bronco Sport Badlands. So according to Ford, that stuff actually does work. The one thing immediately I'm struck by is just how much headroom this vehicle has, uh, which is great. Look at me. I mean, look how much room I have above my head. Um, really nice space. Um, I also like kind of the squared off design. The one thing I'm a little surprised about is the steering wheel. Uh, it's plastic and it's kind of the XL level out of a pickup truck. Uh, and for the most part, Ford has used really interesting materials. So uh, kind of this diamond plate-ish kind of almost rubbery plastic I like. I also like this kind of dual tone color. Um, I don't necessarily like the scratchy plastic. Uh, 
but in general, the seats are very comfortable. Well, I do like how the center stack is incorporated here into the middle of the Broncos Ford. A lot of the Ford products have the screen now that juts out above the dash. This one doesn't stick out too high. I do like how it's easy and clear to read, both volume and two knobs, a big win. Now the Badlands here does have a partially digital instrument cluster with analog gauges for your tachometer and your speed. Down here at the base of the instrument cluster, we've got a single zone automatic climate control with these rubberized knobs. So we have fan speed on the left, temperature on the right, heated seats in this trim. And then of course, we gotta have the rotary dial for the gear selector. Yeah, now let's look at these uh, other little buttons over here, Tom. We've got a traction control off button. We've got off-road, um, I guess, cruise control, right? Uh, and then check this out, a rear diff lock and a four-wheel drive lock. So we'll talk about this in another video compared to the Cherokee Trailhawk, but there is no proper low range in this vehicle, so it does have a kind of a single speed, quote unquote, transfer case. Uh, the rear diff lock, as I understand it, isn't like a proper mechanical locker. It kind of tells the uh, uh, torque vectoring differential in the back to distribute torque evenly left and right, but uh, we'll have to give that another whirl when we get it deep into the uh, woods. Yeah, we're also missing a sunroof. Yep, a sunroof, but you can see back here the stadium seating and how it rises in the back. This is the bigger engine, right, Tommy? Yeah, so there's a three-cylinder and a four-cylinder. This has the eight-speed automatic transmission. There is no manual transmission available. You know, immediately I'm struck by those two massive hood uh, bulges, I guess, uh, on the uh, hood. They're really cool, Tommy. They are really cool. I think it's a... a really neat look you know what we've got a dead-end road here uh, with uh, really no traffic what do you say we uh, uh, give it a little bit of the beans sure yeah we don't have a solo DL uh, but uh, I could certainly uh, try timing it what do you think so let's use this uh, empty road and do a little little test huh let me put it in sport mode you timing me yep I'll tell you when I hit 60 okay three two one floored Keep in mind, we're a mile above sea level. And there's 60. How long was that? Uh, about nine seconds. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, impromptu. A uh, mile above sea level, that seems about right. It is a big car, actually, Tommy. I mean, there's a lot of room back here, uh, and it's kind of boxy. It's not exactly, you know, uh, sporty raked vehicle. It's meant for utility and for off-roading. So uh, that might be close to realistic. You know, you can always subtract a second or a second and a half when you get to sea level uh, because up here, of course, we've got less air density. Uh, so driving it, I gotta tell you, uh, see this comfortable headrest is actually good. Uh, you know, it doesn't really pinch you. It holds you well in place. The Badlands trim sits about an inch higher than uh, other Bronco Sport trim, so it's got about 8.8 .8 inches of ground clearance. Oh, they up Subaru by 0.1 of an inch. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You think that's on purpose? I, I'm sure it is, Dad. They actually tuck the exhaust system nice um, and high to give you a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra room. Yeah, because Subarus are 8.7 inches. How about going around this corner? Let's see what the steering's like. You know, I guess if you're looking for a sports car, this isn't it. I mean, it goes where you point it. It sticks to the road. Not a lot of steering feel, but I wouldn't expect it. Um, I think it's just a very comfortable, um, kind of, you know, just right sort of car. You know, there's that, uh, you know, too big, too small, and just right. And this feels just right to me. Much more rugged than competition from like Honda and Toyota. I think that the design of the interior is really good. I do agree that some of the materials are <laughs> a little bit firm in their overall feeling, but it feels like a very potent contender. Now, I'm really excited to get this thing out in the dirt and see how it compares, uh, but we'll do that for another day. If you're interested in the lower trim levels, uh, like the Outer Banks, Andre has posted his hands-on with the Outer Banks over at TFL Now, so uh, we'll do a link to that video in the description below and you can check out what he thinks of the Outer Banks, uh, uh, but you know, uh, it's just a little bit less expensive, a little bit less off-road worthy. All right, I'm well, on the taller side, 6'2", and I'm sitting behind myself. Uh, and I've got plenty of headroom, but as you can tell, not great knee room. I do love this kind of neoprene material that's on the seat. Uh, thoughtful touches abound, like this zipper pocket where you could store things like your phone. Looky there. And I do like the scalloped backside of the passenger seat and driver's seat to give you a little bit more room. What do you think, Tommy? Well, my favorite portion is actually the floor, which is totally rubberized, 
Looks like it's super easy to clean throughout. They carry this rubberized material throughout the entire floor of the vehicle. And the seats are uh, they're cloth, but they're also uh, pretty durable feeling. So I think this is gonna be a, a fairly simple car to keep uh, organized. Uh, there are actually two buttons to allow you to get into the back. One says glass, and when I push that, yep, you can open up the glass. And the other one says door, and that opens up the tailgate. And then, you know, there's a lot of room back here, Tommy. I mean, this is uh, pretty impressive. I could see actually using this as an overlanding vehicle. Um, and then, of course, it does have a tow hitch. Uh, and Ford says that it tows right around 2,000 pounds. Now, this is cool, too. They've actually incorporated little lights back here as well, which you can aim and position uh, for when you're out at, like, a campsite. That's a nice touch. Look at that. So full-size, well, let's oh, see if it's oh, full-size. It is size. a full-size. It's the Pirelli Scorpion. But it's a 225, and the other tires are 235s. That's kind of interesting. Steel wheel. Yeah. Uh, it would look really good with steelies, wouldn't it? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. So uh, this has been kind of our first hands-on video with the Bronco Sport. What's your call, Tommy? You know, Dad, we've had this for such a short period, it's, it's really hard to tell. But first impressions are it's much more rugged than a lot of its competition. I love the design. I think it's a good design. Most of the interior is nice except for the steering wheel. And I just can't wait to see how it does out on the trail. Yeah, you know, I've long said that if you want to make something off-road worthy, make it square. Uh, and I love how square and boxy this is. It just looks very purposeful. And once again, I want to give a big thank you to our friends at Loveland Ford uh, for lending us this so that we could do a first hands-on review. As always, this is Roman and behind the camera. Yep, Tommy. Saying thanks for watching and remember check out tflcar.com for independent honest and of course as real world as it gets reviews i can't wait like you tommy to take it off road